This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. In a blow to the Trump administration's efforts to silence dissent, the first trial of people arrested at Inauguration Day Disrupt J20 protests ended Thursday, with all the defendants found not guilty on all charges. Six people face multiple felonies and 50 years in prison for just being in the area where anti-fascist and anti-capitalist protesters were marching. During the protests, police blockaded more than 200 people into a corner in a process known as Ketling, and carried out mass arrests of everyone nearby. Those arrested included protesters, medics, legal observers and some journalists. Many were trapped in the kettle for as long as nine hours after police had doused them with pepper spray. They were denied food, water and access to bathrooms. This first case was closely watched as a bellwether for free speech because one of the six people on trial was Alexei Wood, an independent photojournalist from San Antonio, Texas, whose work focuses on resistance movements. He came to document protests during the inauguration on January 20th and live streamed the street detentions by police and even his own arrest. Prosecutors played his entire 42 minute video stream in court, noting he could be heard cheering at some points when some of the protesters painted graffiti or broke windows. Earlier this month, the judge in the case cited the video when she dismissed the inciting a riot felony charge, saying cheering is not enough evidence to prove incitement. Judge Lynn Leibovitz, of the D.C. Superior Court said, quote, personal enthusiasm for the destruction is qualitatively different from urging others to destroy. She said, after the not guilty on all counts verdict came down on Thursday, supporters gathered outside the courthouse to meet the defendants and held a banner that read, Love for all who resist. This is Alexei Wood's attorney, Brett Cohen, speaking after the verdict. The journalism issue is greater for Mr. Wood, and freedom of speech was kind of there as well, um, because I told, spoke about it a little bit in closing that if you just turned off the, the volume, you don't hear, you, know, you wouldn't think that Mr. Wood was doing anything wrong, so a lot of it was about what he was saying. He didn't come with an intent to be with the protesters for protesting. He was just there to cover whatever he thought would be a juicy story that he could sell to others. All this comes as 188 people still face trials over the next year after being arrested during that Inauguration Day protests against Trump, including another Texas native, journalist Aaron Cantu. Well, for more, we're joined in Washington by Alexei Wood, the independent photojournalist who just found was just found not guilty, along with his five co-defendants in the J20 case. And in Houston, we're joined by Jude Ortiz, a member of the organizing crew of Defend J20 and the Mass Defense Committee Chair for National Lawyers. Guild. He's been in the court throughout this first J-20 trial. We welcome you both to Democracy <coughs> Now! Um, well, Alexei Wood, let's begin with you. This is the first time you are speaking out um, uh, during this trial. It just ended. What is your response? What was it like to hear the 42 not guilties yesterday? I was in utter tears. I— um just couldn't couldn't handle myself um, emotionally. I was just so happy for everybody that uh, everybody got full acquittals on every single one of these ridiculous charges. And how do you feel your own vindication? <laughs> I mean, I can I, I could woohoo now, but it's kind of a it would be a shtick at this point. Um, I feel utterly stoked. You know, I feel calm. I feel grounded. Um, I feel just as innocent now as I did when they were arresting me. Um, and there's 188 more defendants to go, um, so let's get them. This is a clip um, of you, Alexei Wood, during your live stream coverage of the protests during a Trump's inauguration. So, howdy, folks. Uh, we got ourselves. Let me see how many. Three blocks of uh, black block. And this is a video of our guest, Alexei Wood, filming his own arrest during his live stream coverage of the protest against Trump's inauguration. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I am currently being arrested. Oh, yes, sir. Let me, let me do it so it's facing me. Yeah, yeah, I am currently being arrested. I am publishing. Um, I will do—I'll follow any lawful order you give me.
So, Alexei Wood, they played the entire video of your live stream in the trial. Um, talk about that day you were arrested and what it <clears throat> felt like to live stream your own arrest and what was happening there. Uh, sure. I mean, on, on January 20th, um, there was a massive show of resistance to the inauguration of Trump. Um, I mean, it was everywhere. The city was alive and buzzing. Um, and I found the anti-capitalist, anti-fascist um, march and protest. Um, and I was just like, I'm going to go check that out. And, you know, I started live streaming and I just spoke freely and, um, you know, I was stoked, you know. Um, I know the prosecution wants to me feel horrific about broken windows or whatever, but, like, it was so fun. And, um, you know, like, it was, it was, you know, resistance with teeth. And um, I think, I think this country could really use that. What did you feel when Judge Leibovitz said that your own personal cheering captured on the live stream uh, was not an uh, incitement to riot? You were just expressing your own feelings. Woo! Yeah, for sure. Uh, that was a that was a close one. Um, I mean, this is narrative warfare. You know, uh, the government and prosecution has their narrative. You know, resistance movement have their narratives. And, you know, there's a lot a lot of things going on here. So to have something so genuine that I just I just put myself out there. I didn't know it was going to be this big huge deal, um, and for somebody, the i.e. the government, to be like, "You are an evil criminal person," like um, I, it was just BS. Um, but you know, I don't know. You just things get projected on you, and you just have to know your own boundaries. Alexei, um, if you could talk about how you felt your video was used. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm stoked that people can watch it from beginning to end. It became this big old First Amendment issue, press freedom issue. It's, it's every single thing I did and said or didn't do or didn't say is there. Um, that part I love. The fact that it's being used against other co-defendants, I hate that. I hate that so much. Uh, you know, it's a live stream. It's out there. Um, but, I mean, this was, this was a targeted mass arrest dragnet where journalists and, and legal observers, I mean, everybody, and they're just, tr they're just trying to pin this on somebody. And uh, that is n not okay. That is absolutely not okay. How did they get your video, Alexei? Um, well, I put it out there. You know, the, the, the original timestamp is on Facebook. I put it on YouTube. I put it on Vimeo. I mean, I, mean I, I promoted it. I wanted people to know about that day, about what was happening. Um, I mean, at the time, Alexa, you were even saying things like, oh, wow, I've got only, like, two viewers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't care. I don't care who my audience is. I'm just doing my thing. And it could be a thousand. It could be two. Like, I... I knew it was a historical moment, and um, specifically the anti-capitalist, anti-fascist um, march and demonstration. It was just like, I mean, people are p pissed off, um, and. Well, you know? I, I wanted to ask you about uh, the prosecutor Qureshi's comments um, uh, when, oh, yeah. uh, when he said in his closing arguments that a street medic was guilty by being present and asked, what do you need a medic with gauze for? She was aiding and abetting the riot. That was her role. And yet, your video that they wanted to use against you and others showed police attacking protesters, which showed the need for medics. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing was ridiculous. I mean, it, I mean, the, the, you know, um, even even reasonable doubt was was don't don't put too much weight on it. According to the prosecution, it's like what. Um, yeah, a, a medic with gauze. I mean, just grasping at their narrative of the of the criminal. It, this was about protest. This was about free speech. This was freedom of the press. How? What? I don't care if I cussed. You know, like I'm I'm trying not to do it here. I understand, but I don't care. 
Um, and that well, day was so wicked awesome. Um, in her opening statement in this first J-20 oh, trial, question. where you were on trial, Assistant U.S. Attorney Jennifer Kirkhoff told the jury on November 20th, quote, "...we don't believe the evidence is going to show that any of these six individuals personally took that crowbar or that hammer and hit the limo or personally bashed those windows of that Starbucks in. You don't personally have to be the one that breaks the window to be guilty of rioting." That was Assistant U.S. Attorney Jennifer Kirkhoff. Now I want to turn to one of the jurors from this first J-20 trial describing their decision-making process after they returned acquittals on all charges. The juror, identified as Steve, told the media collective Unicorn Riot on Wednesday, quote, "...it was not a close call. The prosecution admitted the morning of day one that they would present no evidence that any of the defendants committed any acts of violence or any vandalism. From that point, before the defense ever uttered a sound, it was clear to me that ultimately we would find everyone not guilty. And while there was a great deal of careful discussion among the jurors, it ultimately, at no point, did it seem even possible that a guilty verdict would come down. This was not close. Again, those are the words of uh, a person named Steve, um, a juror named Steve. Alexei Wood, your response? Yes, yeah, Steve. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, you have to understand that. I mean, they, they, I had indicted twice, like superseding indictments, so three times, conspiracy, aiding and embedding theory for property destruction. I mean, it was just like my, it was like five weeks of mind boggling, like legal gymnastics, if it, or like contortion even. Um, and full acquittals on all of us, you know, like, so. Uh, I praise the praise the jury for for sitting there for five weeks. Um, Alexei, you know, will yeah, your video be used in the next trials? I mean, there are trials now for the whole year that are coming up. You talk about the video being used against protesters, but in a sense, didn't the video also vindicate people, showing the police beating on protesters? I mean, anybody who was filming that day got police beating up protesters and, and pepper spray. I mean, like, it was—you the, the, know, I am—you know, my little live stream that the prosecution is using, you know, they, they made a big deal about it. They hyped it up. But there is so much video out there uh, that is all being used as this—in this, like, like the surveillance state, like, like wicked, wicked interesting way. But— um, you know, like, it was a protest, you know, you don't like the message, tough. Um, Alexei, and here we are. before yeah. we go, um, yeah. do you plan to continue to document resistance movements? Oh, hell yeah. And I want to uh, bring in Jude Ortiz as we wrap up. Jude, what does this 42 non-guilty verdicts, um, 42 not guilties in the first trial, everyone completely acquitted. What does this mean for the more than 180 people who are going on trial in the next year? Well, the full acquittals are a resounding victory for resistance movements. Uh, for the, the re remaining defendants, there's still, like, a lot of fighting to do, a long way to go. Uh, the next trial block it has an uncertain date at this point. Uh, the next status here is, is in January. And then there are trials set from March all the way through October. And uh, so it's, it's still a lot of fighting to do, a lot of uh, legal battles and maneuvering. Um, but everyone is feeling very strong and very emboldened like, by this clear victory. And we're looking forward to um, getting more acquittals in the coming year. And also, people all around the country, around the world, will continue to support the defendants as they fight their charges. Each case now has a different judge. And finally, what did the was the significance of the points of unity that 130 um, of the defendants um, agreed upon? And explain that. Yeah, so the points of unity were formed very early on, uh, after people were charged. And that was basically a statement of solidarity and unity together in fighting back against the state repression. So um, a, the vast majority of the defendants signed onto that and agreed, basically, to work collectively and cooperatively 
in order to figure out a way of handling their cases that would not aid in the state repression and would not allow the government to pit each other or each defendant against the other. Um, so this was a really historic uh, development, a historic statement in the case. There's been a lot of historic uh, events that have come up with this case, including this historic victory by the full acquittals. And so as we move forward into the remaining trials, and as defendants continue to, to fight back and push back, I think we're going to see a lot more historical developments and hopefully a lot more historic losses for the state in trying to repress radical left social well, movements. Jude Ortiz, want to thank you for being with us, member of the organizing crew of Defend J20. And I want to thank Alexei Wood, independent uh, photojournalist found not guilty in the first J20 trial, a uh, very stoked independent journalist, 42 not guilties handed down yesterday. Yesterday, all uh, defendants were found not guilty. At the beginning of this trial, a number of them faced 75 years in jail. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, the significance of the independence vote in Catalonia. Stay with us.